this is a good chance for me to grab him. One, two, three. Hey, my name is Spencer and welcome to my wild backyard. Today my goal is to actually get some practice free handling spiders and I figured this would be a great opportunity to bring you along with me and teach you a little bit how to find spiders, how to catch them, and how to hold them in your hand. So I want to show you that they're not actually out to get you. So we're going to head out in my backyard. My hope is to find two to three spiders to show you and teach you a little bit about how to handle them. While I'm thinking of it, I just want to let you know really quick that this video is not in any way intended to encourage you to get outside and handle venomous spiders. Accidents do happen, and I'd rather those accidents not land you in the hospital. So where you're going to look for your spiders is going to really depend on what kind of spider you're looking for. For example, if you want to find a nice, you know, ground-dwelling spider, you're going to look around areas where ground-dwelling insects live, leaf litter, underneath rocks, underneath logs. Or if you want to find like a jumping spider, you might actually have better luck looking around on the walls of your house because they like to hunt little insects that climb up the bricks and stuff like that. And we're going to work our way up from a jumping spider to a ground-dwelling wolf spider. Now, the reason I do this is because as with any kind of skill, you want to warm up first. You want to start small and work bigger. Uh, the reason I start with jumping spiders is they're pretty small, they're easy to handle, usually pretty docile. For me, I'm not exactly afraid of spiders, but they are one of the things I am less comfortable handling. So I start with the ones I'm comfortable with and then build up some confidence and work up to the bigger, badder ones. So our first spider, the jumping spider, is very much a garden variety spider. You can find them literally in your garden, on the side of your house, on the side of sheds, anywhere where flying insects or little uh, harvestmen, little bugs and stuff will stop to rest or climb up. These guys are gonna be waiting there using their camouflage and slow movements to ambush their prey and hopefully get a meal. So I'm gonna be looking in these bushes near flowers and on the walls of my house to see if I can find anything cool and hopefully get a jumping spider to show you. All right, right up here, we got a little bitty jumping spider. I should be able to catch him. Give me one second. All right, when you're catching jumping spiders, you gotta be careful not to squish him. He's a little guy. He's right there. He sees me, hey buddy. All right, so just want to use both hands. I kind of coax him off of his leaf. All right. Once he jumps, he's going to use his escape thread. And you just lower him, lower him down onto your hand, just like that. This individual is a bronze jumping spider. Like all jumping spiders, these are little ambush predators that call bushes and tall leafy plants their home. These guys will be hanging out on leaves waiting for little prey items to come by, which they will then pounce on and eat. Just like any other jumping spider, once you get them on your hand, they calm down fairly quickly. They'll go right back to hunting for insects, and they might even stop to clean themselves and just chill out. Because of their weird body proportions, I find that jumping spiders are incredibly non-threatening animals to work with and are a great gateway species to practice handling spiders. With their huge eyes, which give them actually fantastic eyesight, they actually look kind of cute, and I really enjoy encountering these little guys when I'm out exploring. Alright, I'm going to put this guy back on his leaf, so he can go back to hunting little bugs and stuff in the bush. Yeah, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. All right, so now we found our jumping spider. It's time to move to something more challenging. That brings us down here by the creek because jumping spiders are fairly docile and fairly easy to work with. On the other end of the spectrum, we have fishing spiders and wolf spiders, both of which can be found down by the creek. 
These guys are very skittish and very flighty and fairly menacing looking. So this is kind of our jump from easy to hard really quick. So uh, we're gonna have a look around and see if we can get anything cool. While the creek usually serves as a place where I can encounter all kinds of great species, this particular visit was fairly uneventful. I did happen to see another one of our bronze jumping spider friends hopping around on this elephant ear hunting for something, but I was unable to find a wolf spider or a fishing spider. I was getting worried my luck was starting to run out. Alright, there's one more place I want to check before we call it a day. These brick pillars here, from time to time we get some pretty big fishing spiders in them. This wooden piece here is actually kind of broken on this one. And what happens is these are actually hollow. It, it serves as pretty good cover from the hot sun during the day for these kinds of spiders. So uh, they tend to hide inside the brick pillar during the day. My hope is that there is one inside here and that uh, we can get it and I can catch it. So I'm gonna pull this wooden piece off and we'll see what we have inside. That's heavy. Oh, what do you know? You are not gonna believe the size of this spider. Come have a look. All right, here goes nothing. If he jumps, he's gone. That's it, that's it. Let's go up, up. There he is. Ooh, hoo, hoo, look at that spider. That is a big one. It's all right, you're all right. Just have a look at it next to my hand. Just so you can see how big this spider actually is. I'm gonna get him where I can control him. You can even hear it. You can even hear it moving, it's so huge. Let's get him on the ground. Oh boy. There he is, all right. All right, he's on the ground, I can get him. Ah, ah, come here. There he is. Look at that. Now he's on the stick like this. You can see he's fairly calm. He actually is very camouflaged on the stick, as you can see. And he's using that camouflage to his advantage. He's like, I'm gonna stay perfectly still. Maybe this big human who's bothering me right now is gonna think I'm part of the stick. So I'm actually gonna set this stick on the ground so I have both hands available and I'm going to pick up the spider so I can actually free handle this massive fishing spider. See his legs are going forward. This is a good chance for me to grab him. One, two, three. Just like that. That is how you pick up a massive, massive spider. You see, right now, because of the way his head is, his head and, and neck are all part of the same segment, so he can't turn around and bite me like some insects could. Now, he is currently flashing his fangs at me, so he's very, very irritated at me right now. But we got him. We absolutely got him. Now, this is the dark fishing spider. These are among the largest spiders in North Carolina and probably one of the largest spiders on the entire East Coast. I'm considerably less comfortable handling one of these guys than I am one of these guys. Fishing spiders are non-venomous, so if you take a bite, you'll probably be fine unless you happen to have an allergy to their venom. But with fangs like these, a bite from a fishing spider is bound to be a world of hurt. That is why I decided to do the two finger holding method as opposed to letting it free roam on my hand. So let's go ahead and put him back in his little spot. Oh, he, ju <laughs> he jumped all the way to the bottom. If you want to see more insect and spider content, hit the video to your left and I'll see you then. And as always, don't forget to get outside 
and find your own adventure.